Hello and welcome to News Click. A big day for Indian cricket on two counts. India had a whitewash of South Africa in the Test Series. 3-0 whitewash, which is very rare in itself and against a side like South Africa, which has always given tough competition for India, be it at home or away. And beyond that, the BCCI is on the cusp of a new era. And with me in the studio is Niren Tholsi, who has been in uh, India for a month now, covering the South Africa series, as well as meeting a lot of Indian officials and Indian players uh, for his stories. So, Niren, uh, for, let's get into the South Africa bit now, <laughs> to start with. So, Inflict the pain. Yeah, yeah. So, it's been a series of pain for South Africa cricket. Yeah. Uh, the side has been exposed quite badly and only one match went into the final day, innings defeat and the batsmen have been struggle, struggling against Indian quick bowlers and South Africa quick bowlers. I mean, traditionally we mm -hmm. associate South Africa with fast bowling, and, sure. but they have not been able to establish themselves here. So, what do you think is happening? Right now in South, South African, African cricket. cricket. Yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah, Leslie. I mean, you know, I mean, who would have thought you'd see the day where a South African batsman was concussed by a, an Indian quick bowler, as happened to Dean Elgar yesterday? Um, look, I mean, I think before we get into like really breaking down the team uh, and what's going on um, around the team as well, I think I think we have to acknowledge this is a really really good Indian cricket team. Uh, and uh, and South Africa are a team in evolution. You know, we've lost some some really good players uh, recently. Uh, Hashim Amla, D uh, Dale Stain, uh, uh, A.B. de Villiers, etc. So we're in the process of rebuilding. Um, but what? So it's not so much kind of, uh, for me, it's not so much the, the team's fault, but uh, the people responsible for maintaining standards in the team and the, and the, the people responsible for administrative administrating cricket, which is Cricket South Africa. I think there, that's where you're seeing uh, the problems which are being reflected in our national team. And that's very much around um, development of the sport and who it's reaching. I mean, we don't have a catchment pool as large as India, obviously, mm -hmm. but we still haven't democratized the sport in South Africa. I think 25 years after the end of apartheid to a point where we can have, you know, we're getting a talent pool which is not just our elite school systems and that's a big problem in South Africa. Uh, so uh, you, you got into the mentioning of the elite system. So I remember reading one of your pieces on mm -hmm. Ashim Amla sure. where you mentioned that his career took a turn when he, when he shifted schools. Mm -hmm. So can you just explain uh, for the Indian viewers, sure. uh, how does the South Africa system work mm -hmm. as far as cricket is concerned? What is st structure like, domestic sure, structure? Sure. Look, I mean, I, I think the do domestic structure is quite similar to uh, India where you have we have provinces instead of states and we play a, a, a domestic uh, four-day game, uh, much like the mm -hmm. Ranji Trophy, etc. Um, but uh, at, at, uh, at a much lower level, the, the kids uh, are really groomed at school. So we have some, it's very much like Sri Lanka, where you have these very established old schools initially started by the English, um, like um, St. Stidian's, uh, Durban High School, etc., uh, which have traditionally been um, uh, 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 the production line for, for, for South African cricket. Um, and there and have been a few other schools, I suppose, just outside that, but that's still kind of the upper middle class, upper class kind of like schools which have produced cricketers. So what happened? I mean, essentially, we need to go back to 1990. Uh, sad to say, uh, you know, there was, there was a radical sports council in South Africa which administrated non-racial sport in South mm -hmm. Africa prior to 1990, which was the South African Council on Sport. And they, at the time of the negotiation when South Africa wanted to be uh, readmitted into sports, you remember we came, we played yeah, the World yeah. Cup, we, came, we toured uh, India. India. Yeah. Um, you know, they, they were very, they were very, um, I, th I, th I think uh, non, non, then non-negotiable was that before we get readmitted into sport, let the sports associations uh, and the uh, and, and the sports ministry come together. Let's lay out a plan that's going to democratize all codes, all sports, to ensure that because of apartheid, you know, we had this very unequal playing field in terms yeah. of resources, facilities, coaching, etc. Let's ensure that we have we normalize sport so that even the poorest kid in a in in, a, in an urban township or ghetto or living in a rural outlier uh, 200 kilometers from 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 Johannesburg will still get the same kind of exposure to the sport. So we'll be, we'll be able to compete as well as the kids going to these elite schools. That never happened. Mm -hmm. And now, we see, what, now what we're seeing is, is uh, the chickens come home to roost, essentially, yeah. Yeah, so, uh, so that, that 
is it is it across board that the, such a phenomenon is happening of cricket because cricket we are very evidently during the world cup mm -hmm. that was actually very unfortunate and sad to watch uh, south africa slump like that yeah. we always associate south africa losing in the semi finals <laughs> but, <laughs> but uh, jokes apart it was actually very very sad to see yeah. such a side go down like that and yeah. uh, so across board if you look at it yeah. uh, such systemic problems are there? Um, across the organized sport where you're going to need a lot of uh, facilities, certainly. Mm. Uh, football, I think, is still, it's still, th there's still not enough development going into football, but because we have a large talent pool, we're still kind of producing footballers, some of them playing in Europe, you know, at, uh, uh, in English clubs or uh, Belgian, etc. So the second tier kind of like European clubs. Um, a lot of footballers don't want to take the step up from South African league because they played so well and yeah. they don't want to go, you know, and, and experience kind of uh, alien conditions, alien food, all of yeah. that. So which also kind of limits how we perform, I think, you know, Quality, we reach a particular yeah. level. Um, so football, less so, but certainly there are structural problems across the board from swimming through athletics. Um, to uh, field hockey. yeah, to field hockey as well. It doesn't get enough support from from the association and the and the Olympic um, uh, organizations that it should be. Um, so yeah, I mean we're in a moment of crisis. I think across sport, rugby, rugby we seem to be doing a little bit better. Uh, but again, it's yeah. it's kind of the elite system that's producing these guys, right? Yeah, so basically the big yeah. schools. Yeah, and I mean we're still we're losing players uh, from rugby to go to Europe and stuff. But I think the rules are a little bit easier in terms of calling them for international mm -hmm. uh, because. Uh, international uh, representation and the and the levels seem to have kind of like I think the European club level is kind of caught up with our provincial uh, level so 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 th there's not that kind of th that that suggestion that uh, if you're playing f club rugby in France you're not on the same level to yeah, play yeah. for the Springboks which was there previously yeah and then there are performances in I mean we know that you have produced some great swimmers yeah there is casters I mean yeah. Yeah. athletics decent team comes yeah. out of uh, South Africa. So, uh, so these individual sport, uh, how do they work? Uh, yeah. Because well, look, I mean, when it comes to our athletes, they they win gold medals or bronzes at the Olympics, in spite of the athletics yeah. association, not because yeah. of the athletics okay. association. Uh, that's very much their own work. Uh, and then they, w what we do have is a decent university athletics program. Mm -hmm. So a lot of them get uh, placed in at, at South African yeah. universities. For the swimmers, most of them kind of you know, you're, if you're a teenager, you're doing really well. You get a scholarship and you you end yeah. up in the U.S., which is where which is your finishing school. So you're not really you're not really finished off in uh, in South Africa again yeah. because of the structural issues that we have. Uh, yeah. And so uh, getting back to cricket. The now. cricket. Oh. Yeah. Why? So, Why do we have to? <laughs> favorite sport. Uh, the country thrives on cricket. What can I do? So uh, systemic problems. Yeah. So how is South Africa cricket? The administration. Mm -hmm. uh, what are they doing about it uh, at present? to improve the team's performance mm -hmm. and generally across if there are structural and administrative deficiencies happening. Yeah. So is it, I mean, is it corrupt? It like, is. Like every other thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I mean, uh, um, there have been major issues around, I mean, if you look at our, we've launched our T20 league, the Mzanzi Super League, right? Yeah. Uh, and the T20 format is a format that has worked in every country that it's been mm -hmm. introduced to. It's been a money spinner. South Africa, um, when we launched it, we had to delay it because uh, we couldn't get sponsors to sponsor it. <laughs> you know, I mean, so there's a, there's a reputational issue that's happening with Cricket South Africa. And I think the people that, who are running the game um, have for a long time kind of like just assume that this golden goose will continue to lay the eggs. Mm -hmm. uh, this goose will lay, continue, and, and, that's, and that hasn't happened. Uh, and now you're seeing uh, sponsorship uh, being retracted. Um, you, you, you know, we, after, the, after the Nicholson Commission of Inquiry into the IPL that was held in South Africa, you know, uh, he made strong recommendations around uh, professionalizing how the game was being run. But instead what we've seen is like, uh, is the power go back to these um, the equivalent of the in Indian sta state, state associations teams, would yeah. be our provincial as associations. And where you've got these little kind of like, if, if you get a voting block of very small, con inconsequential uh, cricket associations, right? Yeah. Uh, you can become president. Uh, okay. You can run the you can run the country. Uh, you can run the country's cricket association, and then you've got to look out for these little parochial interests rather than thinking more broadly about the game, which is what's happening now. And it's reaching a point now where you know the cricket South Africa posted multi-million rand losses in the last in the last year. Uh, so now, on top of 
not making a very successful Mzanzi Super League. Um, they're thinking of diluting the talent pool that we have in our top tier by creating more provinces and more, or more franchises and then more, more teams to compete. So what we're going to have is kind of an even more diluted kind of top domestic tier before your international level. So it doesn't bode very well for South African cricket. So you may I, I just going back to what you said. Yeah. So I I heard you talk about how the political game works in yeah. cricket South Africa, and it's interesting that it's almost similar in to India. the BCCI. Well, I mean this this is what I thought when I when I saw kind of Ganguly go from a rank outside on Friday last week to kind of like uh, the hot insider yeah. by Sunday. I was like so there's obviously there's some machinations behind the scenes yeah. where where I suppose the cricket bosses kind of... Uh, Power dynamics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, they, yeah. There was, I think, a compromise formula. Yeah. And obviously lobbying might, not, might have been there also. Yeah. So And this is also, again, like like you mentioned, the reforms that was attempted in South Africa, mm -hmm. Cricket South Africa, mm -hmm. a few years back. This is implementation of a reform, Lothar reforms, that, mm -hmm. is, that is supposed to happen in India. But then uh, you have been here when the election processes mm -hmm. happened, so you, you can see... Uh, how the power plays worked. Sure. And but the stark difference being is that India is rich. Uh, India makes continues making profit. Mm -hmm. And uh, talking about money, uh, there is a there is a worry that now with Saurav Ganguly as the BCCI president, there might be some stance which would harm other cricketing nations in some way as far yeah. as money money. Sharing is concerned. Revenue sharing is uh, concerned with regards to ICC. Yeah. Have you uh, had any kind of a inkling or a discussion from well, well, back home? About, well, about back, no, I haven't really back home. But I mean, I saw his comments uh, on Monday. I think it was yeah. where he was saying, "Look, you know, we need to go back and uh, as the BCCI and be stronger about uh, the money that we're gonna that 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 we're gonna demand because of our, our powerhouse uh, yeah. you know, in global cricket at the moment, which is very concerning for uh, smaller unions like us. Firstly, mm -hmm. because obviously we're gonna have less money. Well, whether to misappropriate and not to like spend and whatever, but uh, there'll be even less money, money coming yeah. to development of the sport in the in the country, right? Secondly, what it also means is that you know we we're going to see because we've seen that already. I think when the BCCI, the Australian Cricket Board, and uh, and and England formed that little block of their own, uh, we saw and this was the time when South Africa was the number one Test ranked team mm, in the world. Yeah. We we stopped playing Test cricket. We, yeah. There was a period where England were just playing all the time, India were playing all the time, Australia were playing all the time, but we weren't. And uh, you know we, where previously we'd have five test series against England, we may have a four or five test series against India, etc. Now we're playing maximum three test series. So it on top of kind of this, you know, this this evolutionary period that we're going through, what we're going to have is less test cricket mm -hmm. um, for for a team that needs more test cricket, if anything yeah. else, you know. Um, so it's, it's, it's a worry as a smaller in, international union, I think, when Ganguly says but, we want a bigger slice of the pie. This, again, so it will be interesting how this power game plays out because at the ICC level, mm -hmm. there is a move to actually disband this big three yeah. idea of cricket and revenue sharing and also hogging all the <laughs> matches that yeah. are available. So, yeah. But, but at, a, at the smaller, at the board level, uh, already games are being played to push, push sure. towards it. So cricket South Africa, if, if, if at all... An occasion comes, which stance would they would they take? Because they can't obviously antagonize the big three. Well, see, this is this again. It comes back to a poor administration because if you remember, I can't remember how long ago it was. It was uh, maybe eight years ago or so. Um, I think when this when this uh, block formed. Uh, the South African cricket, you know, Sri Lanka and a, a few other of the smaller unions had uh, had tried to woo South Africa and say, look, you know, let's let's form our own block and kind of like let's let's stand strong on this stuff. And what happened was uh, uh, cricket South Africa betrayed them and then double backed and and kind of like essentially gave their go, their go ahead to this uh, to 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 that makeup at that time to essentially acquiesce to the demands of the big three at that point. So so it can be so this cricket South Africa can be quite supine as well when it comes to kind of like <laughs> yeah. you know. Not really having the 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 heavy balls to actually uh, yeah. <laughs> do what's required to stand up ethically and morally against uh, you know uh, the worst parts of, of 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 cricket at the moment. And that stands actually translates to issues with with retaining talent because mm -hmm. uh, another issue that South Africa cricket has been uh, facing is is losing of good players. Sure. Call back rule. And, yeah. Uh, they they go abroad and play. Yeah. And money is a big factor because revenue, yeah. and they need to take care of their careers and things like that. So how, uh, how are these things working? Because you you talk about 
very few talent coming up from the elite school system mm-hmm. or the or well, the, the talents still there, they're just not it's not just it's just not being burnished i think to a level and what we and what what i'm suggesting is that you know we can have a bigger pool of talent mm-hmm. uh, we can have a bigger pool of talent that indigenizes the game a little bit more because what we're producing from the elite schools are a very kind of narrow conception of like how to play cricket mm-hmm. whereas if you you know which you know i'm, I'm kind of working in a piece thinking about like the Sri Lankan maverick yeah. and uh, and South African orthodoxy i'm just suggesting that somebody like morilithran would never never come, never come out of south african but system. same applies to india in a way yeah. because because of the we have a problem of plenty in a way and uh-huh. but but institu- institutionalized training centers yeah. academies mm-hmm. they just don't allow individual but yeah we have started experiencing the benefits of allowing a cricketer to bloom maverick mm-hmm. players to come out bumrah being the mm-hmm. class he was he's not beautiful there. man like, he's beautiful how lucky do you feel <laughs> that, that he, was, he was not playing i i would have loved to watch him like take out our tail then we would have gone off for even less probably right <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um but he's a great cricketer and i'd love mm-hmm. to watch him play mm-hmm. yeah i mean he really impressed when he when he made his debut in south africa mm-hmm. i think uh, um yeah and okay. so before we wind up yeah. uh, any last words on how south africa cricket i mean mm-hmm. should should look sure out yeah. it, it's it's look, a very debilitating it, loss yeah i right? know it completely is I and mean, i think you know one shouldn't get too concerned because it is a moment of rebuilding but i think the other issue and i think south africans do that a lot and i hope it's not a message that's kind of come to india as well you know there there's it's uh, especially the white and reconstructed parts of south africa are very quick to blame uh, transformation as a problem why we are doing poorly at the moment or if ever we do poorly you know and it's usually the black players who are um who are uh, 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 picked on more than any others. Uh you know this is the best squad that we could have brought. Perhaps we could have done something I think in terms of maybe not retaining some players for as long as we have, uh, especially like the number 3 number 4 positions. Uh, you know, perhaps we should have blooded some other players earlier because uh, you know the flip side of saying okay, uh, we've lost a whole lot of great players is that Dale Stain has been playing a lot of t- test cricket of the past 2 years. Uh AB Davili has only came back yeah. because his uh, because his bat sponsor in Sicily come back and play against India. Uh, so he hasn't <laughs> been around as well. So you know there's been a period of 3 3 years where where if we're smart about continuity then cricket south africa should have sat, sat down with the coaching team and and said let's plan and they didn't do that and that's what mm-hmm. we're seeing now uh but your original question was oh yeah oh, oh yeah, 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 oh, the, yeah. So, so what i was going to say is that you know people are quick to blame uh transformation as yeah. an issue and uh that's that has been pointed out by former cricketers yeah. as well yeah yeah which is i mean i mean i think that that's 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 a spurious argument we have the we have the best team we have the best squad that we could muster here maybe we could have brought in a yanaman malan or something like that and given aiden markram a rest because he's been looking quite tired before he punched mm-hmm. something and broke his hand uh but uh, uh you know and it's not transformation that's 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 impacting on 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 the on the quality of the south african team it's the fact that the game has been so poorly administered for so long um and that we haven't done proper development for so long you know i mean you guys have economy of scale so you know you got a lot of money coming in yeah. you got a lot of players interested yeah. in playing it uh we need to cultivate that and what we do have in south africa is uh, an emerging middle class which has really taken to cricket and mm-hmm. test cricket especially you know they they watch it they they um uh, come to the grounds especially in johannesburg they really encourage the kids to play the game mm-hmm. the thing is cricket south africa hasn't gone out and kind of like you know embraced them and brought them into the cricketing fold it still remained very narrow and parochial in how it approaches the sport on an administrative level on a sporting development level on a marketing level on how it appeals to people outside of this narrow fan base that it's always had so it's uh, now that the discussion is wound up it's it's actually intriguing to see that beyond the rhetoric that yeah. uh it's a developmental stage it's a transitional phase sure. other stars have retired and so we need the youngsters and they need time and all that there is a systemic problem that is happening mm-hmm. in south africa yeah. uh, and it was great to have you here to point that out to so that so that we also understand that being complacent <laughs> even if you are in each sport doesn't help <laughs> with the billion uh, players with the billion players doesn't help if you don't plan well yeah. and south africa is a classic example yeah. for that thanks niren for your time and Thank hope you, you enjoy the rest of your stay in india and work on your story the larger picture that you're uh, on cricket that you're working on thanks very much thanks. cool